Hey all, Brie from the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I have got a gift for you this holiday season. If you love the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I mean love the No Guilt Mom podcast, then tell us about it. Leave us a review and you can be entered to win a No Guilt Mom gift card. All you have to do is leave a review, take a screenshot, and then simply go to noguiltmom.com forward slash review to enter our giveaway for a free No Guilt Mom gift card. Simply for telling us what you think about the podcast. It is amazing. But don't delay. Get right on this as we're going to be giving away that No Guilt Mom gift card on December 21st. So get right on over and visit noguiltmom.com forward slash review. Hey, it's Joanne, and I am here with another No Guilt Mom win. I have such a good one for you because this is something that makes the total difference in our balance members' lives. Like when they start doing this, they find they have more patience, they're able to go through their days less overwhelmed, and it's not what you think it is. It's actually something called unicorn time. And it is that time that you spend that is solely your own being spent on a fun activity that makes you more interesting, that makes you more interested. And it is a total game changer. So today I'm talking to Amanda, one of our Balance VIP members, and she's going to share a little bit about her unicorn time to hopefully give you a little bit of inspiration about it. And this whole concept comes from Eve Rodsky's work in her book, Fair Play. And if you have not yet listened to our interview with Eve Rodsky, go and do that. It is the episode right before this one. Uh, But without any more delay, here is my conversation with Amanda. Welcome, Amanda. I am so excited to talk to you about your win because it's such a big one, just having time to yourself and being able to spend that time doing something that fills you up. So first, before we get into it, tell us what was your situation before you really started taking that time to yourself, what we call unicorn time? I would definitely say I was giving pretty much all I had to my boys, to my husband. I didn't really take any time for myself. Anytime I had spare time, it was spent cleaning or putting activities together for the boys, things like that. So I really just lost myself in motherhood. I just, I gave myself up really. It it was, yeah, it was terrible. Isn't it crazy though how it happens? Cause I don't think you're alone in that. Always this phrase goes through my head. It was put into me by a former boss and she's like, if you have time to lean, you have time to clean. So, which is horrible. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, but as moms, we like look at our whole place and we're like, well, we're told we're supposed to have this clean environment. So of course, if we have extra time, that's what we should spend it on, but it just goes wrong. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so through like balance VIP, where we are starting to talk about unicorn time and this idea of taking time on an activity that really fulfills you and like nurtures your soul. What is that for you? So for me, that is actually playing the piano. I have a baby grand that I've been moving with me for years. It's kind of become this albatross to move, but I'd stop playing, but I still brought this thing along with me because I love it. And I would always tell myself one day I will start playing again. And just kids happened as they do. <laughs> as they do. Yes. And pianos, <laughs> like we have a piano too. And that's a beast to move. You have to hire separate movers and it has to be like its whole yes. thing. And it's yes. crazy. So you found that you hadn't played your piano for a while And then you started back into it. What did that look like when you started putting aside that time to practice again? So my husband was extraordinarily excited. For my birthday, he'd actually hired a piano tuner for me to finally, because I'd moved and moved and moved and never tuned the piano. So it sounded awful. So once it was tuned, I told him, I am going to start putting time aside, even if it's just five or 10 minutes. 
And it started off just simple scales, like hand and exercises. Then I decided that I was going to play a piece that I have loved for years, which is completely beyond my skill set. The best challenges, right? Yeah, it is such, such a challenge. I gave my, you know, I mentally gave myself a year to learn this thing, but it has been so fun and so rewarding to do it, to be able to show myself that after all this time, I still can. It's just taken me a little longer than maybe before to kind of get back in the swing of things, but I'm getting there. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have the support of my family to be able to take that time. How did you get your family to start respecting that time that you wanted to spend on yourself and practicing your art? So it really stems from the support of my husband. Once I started playing, he very much was like, I love the way the house fills with music. And he's the one who really started kind of gatekeeping the boy. He was just like, this is mom's time. We need to let her practice. And I would say 99% of the time when I start playing, the boys, they don't even approach. They do occasionally, but they're like, it's mom's time. Time to leave her alone. It's, it's pretty miraculous. And did your husband start doing this because he saw that you needed your time? Or what do you think started him to say like, hey, boys, like leave mom alone? I had always talked about it, being picking it up. And then I read that book, Fair Play, really emphasized unicorn time. And, you know, in balance, you have that pathway. And the very first one is unicorn time. And my husband was looking at the pathway and I'm telling him about this book. And he's like, you need to play the piano. So it was that conversation that started about this need for this outside activity. And something I love yes. that Eve does in Fair Play is like, it makes you an interesting person when you have your outside activity. Yes. Because that's something we don't yes. think of. We don't think of like how we're approaching like our partnerships and our relationships when we sacrifice ourselves for our kids or for like cleaning the house. We really take away those mm -hmm. conversation topics and those things that made us interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I've been really lucky. Anytime we have, well, you know, my both of my kids are in school now, so I have these like crazy, crazy swaths of time that I don't know what to do with, and yesterday I was like, I don't know what to do. And my husband's like, well, go play piano. You haven't done it. You need to do that. And I was like, oh yes, I should. Have you noticed a difference in your mood or emotion since you started playing the piano and taking that time? Yes. I am far more patient than I was before. I'm more relaxed one of the beautiful things about playing the piano is you can get out a lot of your emotions and a lot of your, like, like everything that's sort of built up in you, you can pour into the piano. So it was going there instead of at my family. And that was huge. That is huge. That's huge. <laughs> Well, I love hearing that you're taking time for yourself and just seeing the change in your smile and <laughs> it's just amazing to see. And you're always a joy whenever I see you in our balanced VIP groups and coaching, which we're I'm getting off to do actually in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I will see you there as yeah! well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Amanda, for taking the time and sharing your unicorn time and have a wonderful day. After listening to my conversation with Amanda, I have a little bit of a challenge for you right now. I want you to find your unicorn time or at least start trying to find your unicorn time because I, I get into these same things too where we're so busy trying to please others and trying to do stuff for our families that we kind of forget what we find fun. Like, have you, have you had that? I'm getting into that like 
kind of arena right now. And it makes me extremely uncomfortable that I don't know the activities that I find fun anymore because I've spent so much of my time on my kids. So right now I am in the process of exploring uh, what I like and what I enjoy. I figured out I like being around people, lots and lots of people. uh, And I like having parties at my house. And I like going on the Salt River when we can, when it's flowing here in Phoenix. And uh, that's what I found so far. So I want you to take the time to explore now, figure out what you like for your unicorn time. Let us know at hello at noguiltmom.com. And until next time, remember the best mom's a happy mom. Take care of you. And I'll talk to you later. Are you looking for something to listen to with your whole family? Then check out Six Minutes, produced and created by Gen Z Media. With over 200 twisty, cliffhanger-filled episodes, Six Minutes tells the story of 11-year-old Holiday who is pulled from the icy waters with no memory of who she is or where she came from. Three years ago, Brindley Pasternak helped the Anders family uncover the truth about Holiday's past. Now she'll need them to help her find the truth about hers. In Six Minutes Out of Time, the long-awaited sequel, Cyrus Anders is found unconscious near the mysterious Elixir Academy in Florida, and Brindley learns the school may have a shocking connection to her missing mother. Dive in now and get the most downloaded family audio adventure in history. Follow Six Minutes wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free with the GZM family subscription.